What's up, man? What's up, man? How okay. are you? Is, is it really true that you flew to Texas? No, hold on. Get him, Lee. The me. champ, champ. <laughs> the champ, champ, champ. The champ, champ. The now, double greatest. The is, double greatest. Is it true that you flew to Texas to get chicken? To buy some chicken, is that a true story? No, no, there's a place in, in my hometown, Crumlin, Dublin, Ireland, it's called Texas Fried Chicken. Okay. And uh, the place that we were in on holiday, it looked like that place. Oh, okay. So we stood outside, took a picture, and that was what, that's, that's what that was. It oh. wasn't actually in Texas, but oh. there's a place in Dublin called Texas well, Fried Chicken. That's the rumor that's out there. It's not there. a good place, though. They play football <laughs> with the chicken. Oh, my God. But it's still delicious. Hey, man, so now you got the boxing license now. Are you yeah, going to fight, yeah, yeah, boy? We'll yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. What are you going to do? We're looking for anyone. Well, he's been talking all this. I'm the one with the numbers. We're looking for anyone. Well, he's talking all this smack about you. I'm not like you beat this ninja to all you. That's what's up, man. You're the man. Tell him come my, here and talk. Oh, exactly. Where's Ayo? Where's Ayo? My money's on you. Where's your car? Hey, Jeff. 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 Hey,
I am not talented, I am obsessed. Give it up for the notorious Conor McGregor! There's two things I really like to do, and that's whoop ass and look good, and I'm, I'm doing one of them right now, and Saturday night, I'm gonna do the other. I'm gonna wipe that everyone in this division, I said that. And I will do it. He's a little short assed wherever I look forward to punching a hole in his face. I'm gonna hand him my spit bucket, damn dog bag and spit shine that belt and bring it back here as if ready for me to take it. I'm sitting up here with my feet on the desk. What's anyone up there gonna do about it? Not one of you are gonna do anything about it. Connor was born in Dublin City in one of the National Maternity Hospitals here, 12th of July, 1988. Midwife turned to my wife and said, uh, this, this guy is gonna be a boxer because he came out of the womb with his fist clenched. So he was destined to be, to be a fighter, I think. <laughs> I had many fights growing up, as most young boys do from where I'm from and around this area. Get into fights. I won some and I lost some. When he went boxing, I remember he turned to us and says, why didn't you put me in boxing earlier? He knew that was for him. Connor first stepped into my gym when he was about 16. Connor did stand out early on and in, in that he could hit hard and he also had a, let's call it a gregarious personality. I was thrown into a plumbing trade. You're about plumbing, didn't know anything about plumbing. I just went on that site because culture told me that that's what I have to do. I'd done it for a while and then I realized this is not what I want to do. Like, this is not what I want to do, then what the am I doing it for? And I walked out 18 months in, maybe. There was a concern there for, for us, for his mother and father. We didn't know what he was going to do, to be honest with you. Early on, obviously, didn't know what it was. I couldn't look to my mother and say, hey, this Irish man done it. I'm gonna follow in his footsteps because there was no footsteps. I had to, I had to cre create my own footsteps and follow them. They were a little unsure at first, but they, they supported me and they, they knew I would do it. If I said I'd do it, I'd do it, so. I was actually in Ireland and people kept coming up to me and talking about Conor McGregor. Uh, have you ever seen Conor McGregor fight? Have you ever heard of Conor McGregor? Well, I came back to Vegas and, and talked to the matchmakers and they had heard of him. So I flew him out from Ireland. He and I went out to dinner. He told me he's on what's called the dole, which is basically unemployment over there. When I left that dinner, I said, I don't know if this kid can fight, but if he can even fight a little bit, he's gonna be a huge star. There's only 9,000 people that can get into that arena in Dublin, and it sounds like there's 90,000. It was an, a phenomenal night for the, for the sport in our country, and it sent it into the stratosphere over here. We're not here just to take part, we're here to take over. He wasn't in the UFC to make up numbers. He wasn't there to be a token Irish guy. He was there to take over, and, and, and that's what happened over the last 12, 24 months. The, the numbers don't lie. No. When Connor won the interim title and he beat Chad Mendez, I, I think it boosted the confidence of European fighters that they can compete at this level. You know, these guys will come up every once in a while that have that it factor, that thing that other people are attracted to. He speaks well, he's very funny, he's a home run. This next fight 
is done and dusted. It's over. It's been over since January of this year. Aldo is a busted flush at this moment, okay? He's finished. After the Dennis Sieber fight in Boston, remember when Conor jumped the ring and he was in Aldo's face? That moment, the fight was won. Conor McGregor is going to crack Jose Aldo's 